What's up? What's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another session of Coffee and Martial Arts. Salute, salute, salute. Cheers. Ah, oh, yes, yes, very nice. And today we have a very interesting podcast today. Yes, it's um actually it's something I've been looking forward to for quite a while. So I hope you guys enjoy this. But before we go with our guest, let me remind you that we are going um first of all, please, please leave your comments, okay? Uh, or ask questions or whatever, just put your comments there. Um, like and share this video, okay? May I remind you that we're going live through Facebook in our Master Frank Soto Kinetic Dragon uh, Facebook page, okay? We're also going live on YouTube, okay? You can look for us in the Kinetic Dragon uh, YouTube channel, okay? And we're also going live on Facebook on the Internacional with a Z, okay? Because it's in the Spanish Hall of Fame, okay? That goes... That's a webpage uh, from um, a group from Argentina uh, led by Master Juan Martin Alvarez. Salud to Maestro Alvarez. Okay. And we go live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays. Okay. Uh, we usually have guests on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right, from different parts of the world and from different martial arts. But yes, most of them are Kempo guys. Well, because, well, that's that's my main art okay that i train and that i've been you know teaching for quite some time but we also have uh very good instructors from other arts and we have actually few surprises for you in the near future we're gonna have some amazing guests as usual you know but every time we're trying to bring more and more people from different areas for your enjoyment okay so remember please leave a comment or ask a question okay uh, we already have people, some people saying hello. Okay. First of all, let me just say hello to the International Hall of Fame. Saludos desde Santa Fe, Argentina. Saludos from Argentina, from Ernesto Colbrennan. Okay. But before I go on with the salutes, okay, let me uh, talk a little bit about our guest today. Okay. So today we have uh, a Kempo instructor from a far away region of the world. Yes, yes. We have uh, Maestro Nassim Holmes. He uh, he teaches Kempo down in South Africa, Cape Town to be exact. Okay, and he's been teaching, you know, uh, Kempo for the past 13 years, more or less. Okay, and he's been uh, having his own studio for the past nine years. Okay, so... Uh, He's been doing an amazing job sharing the arts down there, okay? And that's why we invited him, and he was very nice to accept, you know? He actually had to finish his class a little bit earlier today to be here because, well, there it's about uh, 8 o'clock at night here where I am, here in Mexico. It's 11 in the morning, so it's really nice how, you know, social media and Internet and all of this works. So... Uh, please, please, uh, let's welcome uh, Kempo instructor Nassim Holmes. Hello. Hi, Maestro. <laughs> How are you doing, sir? Fine. How are you doing, sir? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for accepting the invitation and taking the time for to, to be here. Much appreciated. Oh, no, thank you for the invite. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here. Nice, nice. Uh, well, before uh, we uh, start the interview, we have people saying hello. So let's bring on some of the comments. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Jose Coelho Laredo. Saludos. Salud. Vladimir Da Silva Javier. From Brazil. Hello. This Thank you. Is Big hug, my friend. Grande abrazo. Nice, nice. We have, let's see. Reza? Is it Reza or Reza? Molana. Reza, Reza, Molana. Reza. Okay. 
Risa Molana, hi Master Frank Soto, tune in from South Africa. Nice, nice. I guess these are your guys, huh? Uh, yes, Risa is one of my senior students. Beautiful. Thank you for being here, Risa. Nice to meet you this through this, uh, you know, way. Let's see. We have Fast Grammar. Salute from Cape Town, South Africa. Nice, beautiful. Wow, you're a popular man, my friend. <clears throat> Okay, and Marisaisa, is that how you say it? Marisaisa? Oh, I have no idea. Marisaisa, I guess so. Marisaisa, uh, hello. Did I say that right, uh, Marisaisa? If not, please tell us. Sorry if not. Um, yeah, sometimes I get Thanks this name. Like, oh. Okay, Leek Peterson says, thank you, sir, for the excursion of Cape Town, South Africa. No, I mean, thank you guys. Thank Mr. Holmes for being here. Thanks for Okay, Merv Orman, more great guests. Hello, sir. I hope you're doing well. Getting better. Okay, wow, you you are quite a popular man. We have a lot of people saying hello. Read one. Ah, read one. Read one. Read one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Greetings, <laughs> Master Soto and Nassim Holmes from Read One. Mauser, is that Mauser or Mauser? Mauser yes. Mauser in Cape Town. Nice uh, I apologize for not saying your names properly. I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend anybody, but uh, okay. So here we have a familiar name, <clears throat> Mr. Vigorio. Oh, oh, Mr. Video, yeah. thank you so much. Big hug, Frank, and my respect for Mr. Holmes. Nice. Ah, thank you, sir. Ah, okay. Mari Saisa said, hello, I am from Indonesia. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Salute all the way to Indonesia. Thank you for watching the show. Much appreciated. Wow. It's just, this is amazing. I really love this thing, you know? Neville Fowler says, hi, Mr. Soto and Mr. Combs from Cape Town as well. Wow. Hi, Mr. Fowler. Okay, I'm going to say a couple more, and then we're going to start with an interview. Otherwise, we're going to be here all, <laughs> the whole hour. <laughs> Mr. Liam Brady. Hi, guys. Hope all is well for Marlon. Thank you, sir. Hi, Mr. Brady. Hope you're well, sir. Okay, another familiar face here. Let's see. Damien Abbott says, I'd just like to say how well Nassim and his students are doing with Long 7, the South Africa sessions. Their enthusiasm and ability is humbling, and it's a pleasure for me to teach them. I'm just about to teach now, but wanted to say hello. Enjoy the interview, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Chris Lilland. Lilland? or Lilland. I'm sorry, sir. Um, hello from Denmark. Hello, Chris. I'm going to stay with Chris. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for, uh, for watching the show. Okay. So yeah, we have a lot of people saying hello, but let's, let's just, uh, I'm sorry if I'm not saying all the comments, but we will just give us a moment. So let's just start. Mr. Holmes. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for being here. Much appreciated, and uh, I'm happy to be able to, you know, show some appreciation for what you're doing in South Africa. I think it's very important to share the art and to, uh, like I always say, it's not just about, uh, not anymore, keeping the flame alive. I, I think right now it's a good thing keeping the flame alive, but now we need to spread the fire, okay? So that's what you're doing there. You're spreading the fire, not just keeping it alive, but you're teaching people, and that's spreading the fire of Kempo. Okay, so um, if if you may, please share with us a little bit of your background, your Kempo history, you know, how is it that you started this? Uh, just briefly, for people that are watching you that, that don't know you still, uh, get to know you better, please. Oh, Mr. Soto, but thank you for the invitation and for having me here. It's, it's, a, it's a real honor for us. And for myself, I mean, we huge fans. We followed you as soon as YouTube started hitting South Africa and you, and you started putting items out there. Um, a little bit about my history. I started martial arts. Uh, I was about 12. 
and I've got a traditional background in an, in a martial art called uh, a Bushido karate. Okay. And um, I started I started Bushido at twelve, and then I attained a, a green belt in in Bushido. Um, after after a few years of training, and then um, during that time we relocated to a different suburb. And um, that was, I just sort of finished my, my, my primary school career that time. And we relocated to a different suburb when I started high school. Okay. And uh, so how I came about Kempo was, uh, you know, I was, I was always the little guy and uh, always the timid kid. So uh, I, used to, I used to fight a lot. Um, but um, at, there wasn't any other schools out there that were close to me in that particular suburb at the time. Uh, so I discovered Kempo going into a, 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 local, a local shop where there was a poster up. And I won't forget the poster read uh, Kempo Karate uh, practiced by uh, Elvis Presley. Uh, and um, that was one of the things that caught me because my parents were huge Elvis fans. You know, and then I saw the logo, I saw the, 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 the emblem, and uh, I recognized it off one of the, uh, the LPs, the, the records that the, my parents had. On the cover was Elvis and the guitar with the emblem on it. So I thought, well, okay, you know, let's, let's give Kempo a whirl and see what it's about. And uh, I made contact with the instructor, and... Uh, as I, as I got in there, uh, I met two gentlemen um, that was uh, going to demonstrate the uh, techniques for me. And when I saw it, I was hooked. Nice. Nice, yeah. nice. And this was when? Uh, this was in, in the late 91, early 1992. Yeah. Okay. So you were a teenager? I was a teenager at the time, yeah. I was about uh, 17, I think, uh, wow. 16 or 17. Nice. Um, yeah, and, uh, and you know- And it was I, American Kempo? It was American Kempo, yeah, yeah. So, wow. just, so just to give you a brief history on, on that and how that came to South Africa, it was all how we got to, 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 to get it here was, um, my instructor um, was uh, Lee Peterson, and Michael Thomas. And the instructor was a gentleman by the name of Graham Knowles. Right. And uh, Mr. Knowles was originally from the UK. Um, and we can trace that lineage back to, from, uh, and I stand under correction, but this is what we know so far, is that Mr. Knowles uh, was a student of Mr. Rainer Schilder. Nice, nice. Um, so Mr. Knowles had left the UK and then moved to Johannesburg in South Africa. And uh, through uh, some, oh, that's Mr. Knowles there next to Mr. Parker, a young Mr. Knowles. Nice. And then on the other photo, the person on, on my right hand side, just under the crest, um, is Mr. Lee Peterson. Uh, okay. And uh, Mr. Peterson is still active and, and training at, at my school and, and contributing in a major, major way as well. Beautiful, beautiful. So, Great. Yeah. So, so, that, so that's basically uh, actually, what we're going to have. We're going to have Mr. Schulte. I think uh, I'm not sure if next week or in a couple of weeks he's going to be in the podcast. So. Oh, wow, yeah. Because Great. I spoke to him, I spoke to him in 2012. I met him in 2012 in Holland, and he he was giving me a bit of a breakdown of Mr. Knowles and how Mr. Knowles went to South Africa and, and so forth. And uh, yeah, and that's how the IKK and Mr. Knowles actually. I actually got a PDF, a PDF file um, where Mrs. Parker, um, when when they used to have the Kempo News. And there's a PDF file where um, Mr. Mrs. Parker actually um, refers to Mr. Knowles as the representative for the IKKA in South Africa. Wow. 
Wow. And this was uh, back in those days? Back in those days, yeah. Wow. I think Mr. Really? Parker. I think Mr. Parker had passed away at that time and Mr. Knowles had written uh, a condolence letter and so forth, uh, some words, and it was published in the, I think it was the Kempo News or something that, that, they, that they used to have, a newsletter, the newsletter. And uh, I still have a copy of that newsletter, uh, not the original copy, but uh, <laughs> it's still there. Oh. So, so there is an... Uh, um do you have a lot of Kempo uh, practitioners down there? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of different uh, uh, Kempo schools um, from different organizations out there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, but once again, they're in, they're in different suburbs and so forth. So uh, we, we don't have any contact much with them, or with, with regards to training, that is. Uh, communication from time to time, yes. Uh, they do a lot of good work in the, in the communities as well. Good, good. Wow. Well, that's that's great. That's amazing. You know, it's 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 very interesting to see how Kempo has, uh, you know, been spreading around the world. I mean, you're you're, you're so far away from from Mr. Parker's, um, uh, you know, hometown from from L.A. and Pasadena and all those places. So it's just nice uh you know that that 30 years later after mr parker's passing you're still doing this and you're still you know um helping the community or serving the community i should say through through the teaching so very nice yeah. man very nice yeah um, i mean mr i, I mean we, we we got to credit you know mr thomas and mr peterson who who, who, who basically uh carried on the who, who taken the baton from mr knowles because mr knowles um you know i graded up to a purple belt before i sort of dropped off kempo for a while for many okay. years life took me in a different direction and i was i was i was out of kempo for, for quite some time i only made a comeback in kempo in 2006. but during that time you know mr mr knowles had, had, had moved out of south africa he moved back to the states and then he affiliated with uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Mills, the AKKI. And, um, you know, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Peterson had then lost contact with Mr. Knowles over the years. And Mr. Thomas and Mr. Peterson then, you know, they took the baton and then they started, you know, continue the flame going, basically. Um, and up to the point where Mr. Thomas went to test for his... Uh, for he's black, um, and I think, and I once again, I, I could I could be wrong, but I, I, I think I'm definitely on the right path. He was he was recommended for his uh, for his black by Mr. Roy McDonald, and uh, from uh, Jersey. Right, Mr. And, McDonald. Right. And, yeah, and then for a while, Mr. Thomas had featured on the family tree on Roy McDonald's uh, website before they before they renewed, uh, the, the refreshed their website, basically. Nice, very nice, very nice. Let me let me just bring some comments because we still have a lot of people and uh, we better say hello to everybody. Um, let's see, ah, oh, nice, you're having your coffee, good. Okay, salute, yeah. cheers, yes, yes. Oh, Mr. Stevenson, oh, wow. All right, Mr. Stevenson, I, I, he showed me some of you, uh, he shared some of his Sistema with me uh, in 2014. Uh, that is a nice eye opener as well. Nice. Thank you, Mr. Nice. Stevenson, for signing. What's that? Uh, no, I was just thanking uh, Mr. Stevenson for signing in. <laughs> for yes, support. thank you, sir, for being here. Okay. Um, let's see. I think we have him right there. Yeah. There he is. Okay. Hello, Mr. Cedarton. Yes, he's doing some Sistema stuff there, right there. Nice. Yeah, cool. that's some of the Sistema stuff. Yeah, nice stuff. You know, uh, there's there's a lot of, of Kempo guys that uh, have, um, you know, uh, learned some Sistema stuff and applied it. You know, the uh, one that actually moved from Kempo to Sistema and he did 
uh, really good is um, oh man, I forgot his name. Um, uh, Martin Mr. Wheeler. 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 Yes, correct. Right. Okay. Let's see. Ashley Wolford says, "Good evening, Mr. Hall from Cape Town, South Africa." Nice. Hi there, Ashley. Thank you for signing in. Nice. Dwayne Williams. Hi, Mr. Soto, Mr. Holmes. Greetings and well wishes from Ireland. Thank you, sir. Hi there, Dwayne. So, so I met Dwayne in Holland in 2012 with, uh, with Mr. Ward. And uh, funny story, uh, we, did a, we, we attended Mr. Ward's uh, uh, pressure point seminar. Uh, and uh, what one of my students, uh, Junaid, the two of us were doing this this pressure point uh, that was the ward was demonstrating, and um, <laughs> we couldn't feel it. And Junaid was saying, "No, no, you're going to press harder. You're going to press harder." So I pressed harder, and he dropped to the ground. And uh, Dwayne and Mr. Ward had to revive him, <laughs> and I got the whole thing on video. <laughs> nice, nice. So you've been so we a student of You've been a student of Mr. Ward ever since, right? That's correct, sir. Nice. So, um, hello to Mr. Ward. Uh, he said he was um, gonna. He he was teaching and he was gonna start watching the past podcast past half the hour. Okay, uh, let's see. We got more people saying hello, my friend. You, you, you're like I said, you're doing an amazing job, man. You, you have a lot of people commenting here. Let's see. Uh, oh, good. Says three to one. Uh, three to one. I three think he's one. referring to if you, if you if you mispronounce his name, he says it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, so, man. I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying. I really am. Three to one. Three to one. Right. Yeah. Read one. That's right. Read one. Read one. Yes, I will remember and that. So, so, so read one was one of um, he was read one was actually my senior in the yeah in early 1991 92. Yeah. Nice. He was he was one he was one ahead of me. Wow. And now he's your student. Oh uh, no, sir. He's he's uh, he's a family man now. <laughs> oh, We're trying to get him back. Okay. Trying to get him back on the map. Oh, come on, Mr. Ridwan. You need to go and train. Okay, so I got one question before we continue with the comments. Um, have you, you know, you've been teaching Kempo there for, for you know, several years now. You're doing a good job as, uh, from what I've heard. Um, and, you know, from all these people that are saying hello, that shows that you're doing a great job. But I wanted to ask, have you, uh, do you teach the whole 24 techniques or do you teach do you change the curriculum do you, do you have anything that you need to adapt for the people there or is it all the same what are the changes you have done you know where i'm trying to go yeah yeah so so what i've done yes uh, it, um, we teach the 24 technique syllabus great all right we teach the base we teach the base syllabus as close to as what mr parker has has put out um, and that was handed down to us from our instructors, uh, Mr. Peterson and Mr. Thomas. Um, so we teach those base techniques, but there is quite a few techniques that um, I have altered for the environment because there's certain things that don't apply uh, in our country, for example. Okay, um, could, you, could you give us an example? Yeah, so if you look at um, captured uh, captured twigs, the first white belt technique. Right. Uh, the air hug. So mm -hmm. what happens in the, in, in the American Kempo system is it, it's classified as a high bear hug, which allows you to be able to get that groin strike in. Right. When you do the horse stance and stuff like that. Um, in South Africa, though, that is not the case. It's never a high grab. It's more a grab on or below the elbow to restrict that arm movement. So the traditional check um, doesn't allow you to, to break the grip. So uh, we altered that into, um, into something different that would allow us to, to, um, to create the space. 
Okay. So you can what? see, the is demonstrating that his hands is free to move. Uh huh. In South Africa, that wouldn't be the case. Why? Uh, because they will restrict your movement. They, when, when, when somebody attacks you and hold, grabs you from behind, it's to limit your movement as much as possible. Okay. So your arms would be basically pinned to your, to your side like that. Mm -hmm. So if I move back, if someone were to grab me, it wouldn't be where my hands could move. It would be where my hands are like that. Okay, so it would be lower. So, so it would be lower, yeah. So they would grab much lower. So, uh, nice. so this movement has nullified. So we, so we needed to change that. Okay. Uh, so, so what, what I changed was, um, if I do this just from this position, if somebody had to pin me like that, what I did was we shoot the arms down and out. Nice. To be able to, to, to be able to give us that freedom of movement. Couple that with a step to the side that allows us for the groin stuff. So just just started a prefix mode. Beautiful. Yeah, we we added something different there, and then we obviously go into the what if. So because you will always have someone say, well, what if you do that, and the guy's hands come up and he does it too, and now you've got your grip of death. Well, you're still applying the same principles and everything, so it's just you know it looks yeah. amazing. Great, great, very nice. Okay, so uh, so you you kept the twenty four techniques and you're still teaching the the forms, the set, all that, but you're you're having to adapt according to what your experiences in your environment, right? That's basically what you're saying, and just little yeah, changes. So we just minor minor tweaks, minor changes, minor tweaks. Um, you know, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Right, you're just tailoring. You're tailoring Kempo to your environment and your people and, you yeah. know, your own experience. That's good. That's amazing. Wow. Great. Very nice. Okay. Um, and do you teach children? Yes, I do. Uh, we, with, with, the, with the kids, we, we focus on their coordination first. Um, so we've got our age groups from six years old upwards. So... Uh, the kids, the kids' curriculum is is, is modified, uh, mostly for the fact that we work on their their verbal skills uh, versus the the instead of getting all that aggressive. Uh, because I mean, some of our Kempo techniques are rather aggressive, and to teach that to a six-year-old um, who doesn't understand, who can't distinguish right. between the right and the wrong. So uh, what we do is we make it playful and. Instead of doing the technique where they'll do the technique on a person, we'll do it on the placements. Okay. So we'll run different different drills on the focus mode and on we'll sort of have the body pad and they can rather punch the body pad and you know and then pull their coordination through forms and nice. and then when they get to more or less 10, 11, 12, are working off the, the the main curriculum. Nice, nice. So that uh, so you, you, you can you can sort of explain to them, you know, uh, what what is right and what is wrong. Okay, so to have a, a successful school there, studio or dojo, how many students do you need, or how many students do you oh, have? Oh wow! No, I don't have that many students. Um, I have just over 25 students that's that's good right. that's a good number <laughs> anywhere oh uh, okay uh yeah now i i teach from my from my house so i've got a garage dojo i've got okay. 30 just over 30 square meters of space um nice. so uh, there's space for everybody and um during certain um sessions we will sort of have the guys on the side of the map and only the people that need to demonstrate in the center. Um, but most successful schools are running a hundred plus students, but those are full-time schools that, that, that teach uh, six days a week. Right. Yeah. The, uh, I'm currently on three days a week at this point. It's, it's Kempo well known there. Uh, in the Western Cape. Yeah. 
Yes, there's there's a there's there's a lot of different Kempo schools out here. Um, that uh, I mean, I think we are the original uh, sort of Parker IKKA lineage uh, uh, from a syllabus point, and then the other guys I'm and I speak under correction though they but they were they were most they mostly known for Chinese Kempo, uh, which is um, uh, Master Chuck Sullivan and Vic Leroux. Oh, oh, cool, great, great, yeah. okay. And what is the most popular art down there? Taekwondo. Well, jujitsu is taken the world by storm, right? So it's, jiu it's everywhere. Right. So jujitsu and uh, and and mixed martial arts is, is a little bit more popular now. Uh, but traditional karate is still very much uh, still very much thriving and, and and strong. Kempo is not as well known though. Okay, we're we're um, yeah we're we're trying to change that. Yes, we're trying to make Kempo. That's what I'm always saying. That's why I say that keeping the the flame alive is not enough anymore. It's a good thing, not a bad thing, but we need to spread the fire more. We need to you know keep on teaching and and uh, uh, you know that's why I like doing this. You know to show some appreciation to people like yourself. You know with with what you're doing down in your community. Because we understand the sacrifice, you know, and the, the struggle that you need to go through just to keep a studio open and, you know, and to commit to your students. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. So, so thank you, you know, as, as a campus, I can say thank you. Because we all like to see our campus try, right, and continue. Yeah. Oh, but I mean, it's, it's it, you know, our history with with Kempo was like so. Like I said, you know, Mr. Knowles had left had left the country at some point, and then uh, Mr. Thomas and Mr. Peterson they they picked up the they picked up the banner basically, you know, and then they started going forward, and you know, life happened for them as well. You know, they you had, they had because Kempo wasn't paying the bills. It's not a full. It's not a career, not not in not in South Africa, anyways. Um, so what happened was both Mr. Peterson and Mr. Thomas had then, you know, they had then moved on with their lives. They needed to, to you know, to start uh, putting sort of food on the table and the careers took them elsewhere. So they, so they took their part. And then uh, Mr. Zaid, Zaid Khan and Mr. Mark Smith were the two senior students at the time. Now, I made a comeback, like I said, in 2006. That was the time that Mark Smith and Zaid Khan had then um, had picked up the banner, and they started, you know, they, they they started keeping the flame alive, and they continued. And then I became a student under under Mr. Khan and Mr. Mr. Smith. And as life, like I said, happened again, uh, Mr. Smith had moved into a, a different suburb as well. Traveling between the two suburbs started to become very costly. Uh, he then opened up a dojo in that suburb, suburb for a while, and uh, Mr. Khan then continued. So, and then Mr. Khan got married, and then life happened for him. And then during that time uh, was when we took over from Mr. Khan and uh, and Mr. Smith. So myself and and a gentleman by the name of Andre Solomon, uh, we partnered up and we took over the school. And uh, it was during that time that the two of us had made a decision that what we would do is because, you know, our instructors, you know, Mr. Smith, Mr. Mr. Khan, Mr. Thomas, uh, Mr. Peterson, during their time, there was no Internet. All right. So right. we didn't have Facebook. Right? There was no YouTube. There was nothing. I mean, we had notes. You know, I mean, you would have one guy sitting on the side going. Oh, well, you got to step through 11 o'clock with an inward block. And so, and, and you would read the notes and you would have to follow the notes and you would formulate your technique eventually, you know? Right. So we, we, we didn't, because we didn't have those instructors to take us beyond our, our brown. So and, and, all we had was the notes. We, and we need then, to add, uh, it's not that simple to decodify it or understand a technique when you're just reading it through the manual. It's, it, it takes, it requires some talent. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all, not at all. It was off the time you were going, say so what? Just, just say, do that again? You had to go, where? <laughs> so no, no, it was, it was, 
and then you would argue amongst each other. It was like, no, that can't be. It doesn't make sense. And then eventually, you know, you know, you would come back a few days later. You'd go through the same thing, and then you know it would click. You know, and techniques were easy in the sense of you know they they were quicker to learn with with regards to the notes and so forth. Uh, you try and read a form of twenty pages, right? And try and put right. your form together. Um, yeah. You know, by the numbers, it it it, it boggles the mind. Um, but yeah, but going forward, we we Andre and myself then we YouTube started becoming uh, um, becoming a thing. thing. Uh, you you posted videos on YouTube. I remember we followed we followed a lot of your of your uh, Kempo at the time. Um, and that was, that was two thousand. Yeah. yeah, and I mean there wasn't there wasn't a lot of people putting out no. anything on YouTube at the time. So. You know, we we latched onto anyone and everyone that that would put something out, and and oh, you know we could learn from. But on could, that yeah. on that note as well, the internet in South Africa wasn't all that freely available as it is today. Oh. Oh. You know, it wasn't easy, and it, and back then it used to be those dial-up modems. You know, you, you dial and, and then you like it. <laughs> okay, right, okay, right. It's, it's buffering. We're gonna get there. <laughs> You know, so it was, it was a very, it was a very challenging time for us. And then I think it was about 2009, 2010, um, when, when Facebook started really taking off and Kempo started uh, becoming uh, a, a little bit more popular. Um, and I think we spoke at that time as well, during that period. Um, because Andre and, and myself had, uh, we, we had agreed that we would reach out and see if we could find an instructor that would recommend us for a black belt test. Right. Because there wasn't anyone in South Africa that could test us. And um, it, it's, it's, you know, we, 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 we made the conscious decision not to get to that point where you ended up um, buying your black belt type of thing. Yeah. You know? And I remember you, you, you went to Europe because it was like the most convenient thing to do. And you found, you found some great instructors there and, and you know, that, that was good. That was amazing. You know? and, and, and the, the fact that you were looking and that you went out of your community and you travel and stuff, and some people don't understand all the sacrifices and the investment that you need to do to, to get there, you know, it's, oh, yeah. it's I mean, it's, it's yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of a lot of guys. So, so I mean, we we made contact with quite a few uh, American instructors, and you know, uh, America is a, a capitalist country, right? It, it's it's about the money, and 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 that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? No. I mean, these instructors they acknowledge, you know, so they need to get paid, right? So. And, and I mean, if you if what what people don't understand about South African currency, right? South African currency is so low compared to the dollar, the the, the pound, and the euro, right? Is uh, that we understand here in Mexico? Mexico? Yeah, it's like you know, if you say if you say, look, it's going to be ten dollars. You know, you take that ten dollars and you multiply that by twenty or nineteen. I don't know what the exchange rate is now. I think it's about eighteen or nineteen. So you're gonna multiply my my investment by nineteen, and then I still got to pay the, the the bank charges and the conversion rate to pay that instructor. So no, it's no longer ten dollars that I'm paying. I'm paying closer to twenty dollars. Which, which is funny though, because uh, you know while, while we were searching for for uh, instructors to recommend us, we tried to purchase some of the Larry Tatum DVDs, Master Tatum DVDs, and we actually made contact with Master Tatum, and uh, his DVDs at the time were going for thirty five dollars, right? And um, so we thought, okay, well, you know, we'll buy a couple, and then we'll ship it. So it turned out that the dvds would cost us the insurance for shipping would cost us double what one dvd would cost so that would mean 70 dollars multiply that by whatever the currency was then and that was like yeah, that was a no -go. i understand it's crazy yeah. yes i remember back in so, those days i i sent 
maybe a couple of the, the programs that I used to sell, at least a couple, I, I send them down down there. And uh, the shipping was just crazy. It was just so expensive, you know. But it yeah. is what it is. I mean, you are moving, uh, you know, material from the other side of the world, literally, you know. So yeah, yeah. And now no today you can you can down. Right. But right. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple of there's a couple of people that need that that needs to be recognized for for what we where we are today, and um, one of those 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 people is, is Romano Mikkelsen from from Holland. Nice. You know, without Romano, I would never have gotten that opportunity to grade in front of the international panel. You know, um, he, he he wrote the recommendation letter. He backed me up. Um, and we had something like six months to, to gather all the funds to travel through to Europe to actually to actually be there uh, and, and do the, the live test. And uh, I remember I tested with uh, Mr. Velez, Gilbert, Mr. Gilbert Velez and Mr. Paul Dowling. And uh, I think uh, Jose Maria uh, was there as well. Um, I think those were all after my grading. <laughs> those are nice pictures you got there. A lot of familiar yeah, faces, just, you know. Important yeah, Kempo yeah. Mr. Egan just made oh, oh, yeah, oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Tabat Tabai. Oh, right. What, oh, one thing with Mr. Mr. Tabai that that, that uh, uh, really stood out for me is that uh, that photo there was taken literally five minutes after my grading. Um, the, the, the top, the top right photo. Uh, right. With my, one of my students, Adriessa. Um, and I won't forget, we, I had just finished this grading and I was shattered after that grading. I was exhausted. And um, I just sat down and I saw Mr. Mr. Tabai come across the Crossed literally from the other side of the of the of the stadium, and he just made a beeline, and um, he, he he came right over. There was a couple of guys that tried to chat to him along the way, and I think he he, he kind of just said, "I'll chat to you now. I'm, I'm I'll be I just want to chat to this guy." And he and he came to me and he tested. Um, the instructor said that uh, you did really really well. They were amazed by by someone from south africa that just came that came to do the test because the foundation of the basics was solid uh, nice. and that is uh, thanks to, to to mr peterson and to to mr thomas because they drill those basics and then you know mr khan and mr smith you know they they just carried on with that and reinforced that so it was a real it was a real honor to meet uh, mr tabat tabai uh, in, in that way and he sat with me for for a couple minutes and uh, you know uh, we had a bit of a chat and so forth. Amazing. That's nice. Yeah, Mohammed is it's it's a great uh Kempo instructor and a good Kempo ambassador. So yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Uh let's see. Let me bring some more comments because we have a lot of people saying hello here. Okay, where were we? Where were we? Man, there's so many people here. Wow. Okay. Brandon Clark says, good evening and good day from Cape Town, South Africa. Spread the love and experience. Ah, uh, Sensei Clark, yeah. He's an awesome martial artist as well. Traditional uh, karate ancient. Very, very, very good. Nice. Okay, salute to you, sir. Okay. Rivka or Rivka Jacobs? Rivka, Hello. Rivka Jacobs. Yeah, Rivka competed in the Jersey 2000. Um, on my on my home self defense Facebook page, there's an album called IKC or Jersey IKC 2000. Rivka was one of the grand champions there. Nice, nice. Yeah. He says, uh, "Good evening. With, uh, Looking uh, forward Martin. to your interview." Nice. Awesome. Okay, Andy says, "Nice to see you again, Nassim. Hey, nice. Hello, sir." Saeed Khan says, greeting Maestro Soto and Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Mr. Khan. Um, so Mr. Khan was, was, the, our, our, uh, was our senior uh, student. 
at the time. Um, nice. Something right. that, you know, that, that people should know about Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan, uh, when I remember uh, before we took over the school from Mr. Khan, Mr. Khan was a brown bar. He was on his uh, first, uh, he was a first brown. And Mr. Khan stayed a first brown uh, because, like I said, there was no one else to test us to black. He, he remained on that first brown for almost, I think, almost 18 years until wow. uh, Grandmaster... Grandmaster Dennis Tosten from the UK came came to South Africa and he was on holiday, and uh, he was training at one of the other campus schools in in in, in the suburb, and we were invited for a seminar. And it just so happened that evening that Mr. Khan was testing, and we witnessed uh, his test at that time. And Beautiful. you know, Beautiful. yeah, one 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 can say, look at. at for, for someone that waited, I mean, like I said, you know, he could, he could have easily gone to go and buy his bar, you know, right. and said, I'm a black bar. Right. But he waited for that test and he got tested. Well, that talks very good about him. Congratulations, Mr. Saeed Khan. Nice. Dan Dan uh, Grandmaster Daniel, Daniel um, Hayan, greetings from Belgium. Have a great talk, Master. Thank you, sir. Hi, thank you. Let's see. We got uh, Rolf Grammer says, Good evening, Mr. Soto, and the scene greetings from Cape Town. Rolf Grammer. Did I say that right? Yeah, but Rolf, but Rolf was also on uh, Mr. Thomas's uh, 2000 jer jersey team, who also brought home uh, a few medals and, and a trophy as well from the, the IKC in 2000. Yeah, wow. Rolf, hopefully. So uh, I'll, make this, I'll make this internationally known now, Rolf, if you're listening. Uh, Rolf is testing for his black belt later this year. Wow, nice. Well, good luck on that, sir. Right, great. Nice. I like I being aware of good news. <laughs> Thank you. Janet Bueno, saludos. Salud from Ciudad Obregón. Saludos. Thank you. Uh, that's a city close by. Mr. Ben Harms, Maestro, greetings from Kempo, UK. Ben Harms, thank you, sir. Greetings all the way to the thank UK. Okay, now we have Mark saying, well done, Mr. Holmes. Mark Smith. Oh, oh, no, no, I think that's a typo, Mark Smith. <laughs> okay, that, yeah, yeah, that sounds better. So, yeah. Okay, Mr. Smith. So, so Mark, Mark, so Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith was uh, partnered up with Mr. Khan. When they took uh, when they took the banner from Mr. Thomas, and then they 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 took over the school, and right. then I became one of I became one of their students, and then like I said, life happened, and then myself and Andre ended up taking over the school. Well, I'm sorry about saying that, but uh, the the last name I try to keep it the way they write it. You know, I just yeah, you know yeah, sometimes yeah, I see it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I see it, but I'm like maybe they're that's their last name. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, like I said, we're blessed to have so many people from so many different areas of the world. You never know, you know, if they have like a different yeah. last, last names and stuff, and especially with the names. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, Mujahid. Mujahid. Mujahid, my son. Mujahid. That's my son. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, nice. Oh, he's on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, okay, he's in trouble, I guess. Yeah, so, so, so Mujahid, Mujahid is one of my senior. He's, he's a he's a blue belt. Uh, he's uh, he's going to be seventeen this year. Wow! So he's, he's he's growing up to be a a tall tall young man, and he's been training since he was five. Wow! Beautiful, beautiful. He's been you training since be, he was five. You so must Oh no, I am. People ask me why is why is only a blue belt. I said, well, because uh, nobody gets a belt here. Everybody has to put in the work. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Ken Keaton, Keaton says, "Hi, Nassim from uh, Dublin, Ireland." Yeah, Mr. Keaton. Yeah, yeah I I oh, met Mr. Keaton and in Portugal in 2019. Yeah, Mr. Keating shared uh, shared one of the techniques uh, with me. Um, which was I can't get to the name of it, but oh, it was it, it was a it was an awesome insert into the technique. Nice, nice, Mr. Anthony Angulo, awesome interview. 
It's great to hear how the art traveled to distant lands and had a positive influence on solid individuals. All the best, Mr. Holmes. Yes, thank ah, you. Thank you, thank you, MC. Wow. Okay, we have Langford uh, Berm Bermuda. Bermuda. Mr. Bermuda. Bermuda. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Soto. Thanks. Welcome, Kempo Universe Evening Instructor Holmes. Looking good. Yeah, Langford is one of my one of my students as well. Um, when when uh, he doesn't uh, give me a half baked session, he's very good. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yes, moments where you'll he'll pull those with he'll pull sort of like a lazy session. <laughs> but it's very really good. I'm just trying to get him to do it all more often. Nice, nice. We have Ashley Wolford again saying greetings uh, Mr. Holmes from Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah, Ashley is uh, also one of the practitioners on a different suburb though. Yeah. Nice. We about 30 minutes apart, I think, 30 or 40 minutes. Wow. Tracy Monique, grab ah. corner. Deep respect for you, Mr. Holm, for waving the SA flag here, the South African flag here tonight. Yeah, Trace, Tracy Grammer um, was also part of, if I'm not mistaken, I think she was part of the team as well that went over in 2000. Uh, she is Rolf Grammer's sister. Um, I, I think I met her once or twice. Uh, many years back. <laughs> nice, nice. Thank you, Andre, for signing in. Andre Solomon says, great instructor and martial artist. Fantastic job, Nas. Really proud of you. Wow, nice. Yeah, thanks, Andre. So uh, that's Andre Solomon. Uh, Andre Solomon is a black belt under Mr. Josh Lennon from the AKKI. Uh, and Andre and myself, actually, we were the ones that took the banner from Mr. Smith and uh, Mr. Khan. And um, when we, when we opened, when I opened up my school, um, I stayed with the IKKA, and Andre then pursued the the, the uh, Paul Mills uh, variant of Kempo. Right. Um, right. Cool. Which then gives us quite a broad uh, or a diverse spectrum of Kempo in in Cape Town. So. Yeah, and, nice. and Mr. Land and Josh Land was here a couple of years ago, and we had the, 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 the privilege of training with him for a few sessions. Okay, so we have somebody committing here. Let's read that. Mr. Holmes, I will be joining you soon once a campist, always a campist. <laughs> I'm going to hold you there, Mr. Mauser. <laughs> ah, nice, yeah. I will ask next time I talk uh, with you, I will say, hey, what happened to Mr. Mauser, okay? There we go. <laughs> With read, read a one, read a one. I got that. Yes, I got it. So I said I was not going to forget. I got it. Yes, yes, good. Patricia Monson, hello from Argentina. Salute. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Patricia. In. Lee Peterson is asking, what about the knife attack attacks in South Africa? <laughs> so both both Mr. Peterson and I are working on a, 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 a on various. Uh, he's working on his thesis, and I'm working on mine uh, with regards to the variation on knife attacks um, in in South Africa versus our Kempo techniques. Nice. So the Kempo techniques has no has no application here in 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 South Africa at all, um, because those kind of attacks just don't happen here. Um, the the the, Kempo, the 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 South African environment is more of a pick and rip instead of a slash and stab. So um, with Kempo, it's either that or with the Filipino arts or with the thrusting and stuff. Uh, with South Africa, it's more of the overhead pick, stab, rip, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so knife attacks. We 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 both analyzing the different the different. Uh, Great. Um, strategies and viewpoints of how do how can we apply Kempo to that space? Beautiful, beautiful. That's the way to go. You know, you need to adapt the art to your needs. Yes. Nice. Andy says, I love the fact that that Nat has open an open mind and it's so able to adapt. Nice. Ah, thank you, Mr. Stevenson. You know, when, when, um, was that when sorry, I was uh, chatting Sorry, 
but uh, when I was chatting to, to Mr. Seatherton in 2014, um, I, I, I was sharing some ideas with him and he introduced me to some of these Sistema uh, items there. And, uh, you know, it's just the benefit of going to the IKC, you know, and, and, and meeting the caliber of instructors like Mr. Seatherton, um, you know, when they share something different, it's like you go, like, I never thought of it like that. Right. You know? So it, it, I always, I always say that, uh, you know, I tell my students, you've got, you've got to make it, in, uh, uh, make a point of actually going to one of the IKCs and attending one of these senior seminars. Right. Right. And and one of the beauties of Kempo is that it's so well uh, structured that you can add or you can adapt or just take from other uh, systems like the Russian Sistema, which is an amazing art as well and just apply some of those ideas and the way they solve things into your own matrix of Kempo. I, I think uh, uh, if, if anybody can be exposed to that, I suggest that you do so. I, I really enjoy arts like Sistema. I think they're amazing arts as well. Yeah, I, 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 I sort of drifted to the Jiu Jitsu. Right. Um, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't in my game plan. Um, in actual fact, when, uh, when I decided uh, if I, when I got my first Dan, I was going to do Aikido. And, um, that, that plan got derailed, uh, in, in, in a massive way. And I actually just shared the story with, uh, with Mr. Smith this evening. Um, so what happened was, uh, my game plan was I was going to get my first degree black belt. Uh, I was going to start my school and then I was going to do six months. Um, I give myself six months to start the school up and then start Aikido. And uh, during that six months, I had a guy that walked into my class and uh, uh, basically challenged me to a fight. And he had some MMA experience. And uh, I, I refused the, the, the fight, but it eventually soon it became apparent that I, they wouldn't allow me to leave unless I fought this guy. And uh, what happened was I... We, Took the fight started and I was on for just under two minutes, I think. And this guy took me to the ground and I was never able to get back up again. Uh, he, he he dominated the 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 the, the, the space. Right. Um, and fortunately for me, I wasn't injured uh, dra uh, drastically injured or anything like that. Um, and I, the. At, at some point, after taking a few blows, um, I was basically just holding this guy so that he couldn't get posture, basically. But it was a, a, a natural defense move. It wasn't a move that uh, I knew uh, that was planned or whatever. And right. that carried on for what seemed to be like a lifetime on the ground. And eventually, this guy tapped me on the shoulder and he said, okay, cool, we're done. And I thought, okay, fantastic, because I was, I was wasted. I was knackered. I, I couldn't drive home. I had to phone someone to come and fetch me. I was that exhausted. You know, the energy had left me. And um, however, this guy was carried out by two of his friends that were with him because uh, he was, we were scuffling on concrete flooring. And his, his elbows and his knees had taken such a pounding on the floor because we were moving around. And uh, when I started my jujitsu journey, I explained that to my instructor. And my instructor said, look, the chances are this guy was also new to the jujitsu. And he could not have had more than six months or eight months worth of training. But he says, because any jujitsu practitioner would have known that that would have messed up his, 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 his joints on right. the floor. Right. Um, but that was my journey. Then, and then I decided, no, I needed, I, I, I needed to do the jujitsu and so forth. And um, yeah, I, I joined up and uh, been studying jujitsu for a while. I haven't, I haven't been practicing for about three years. Um, so, and I've had some very, very good instructors along the way. You know. Wow. Well, uh, my friend, we are out of time. So let me just say hello fast to the people here. Okay, I'm just gonna go by them to just wave if you want, because I wanna. Talk, just say hi to everybody. International Hall of Fame says, Saludos, maestro. Salute from Argentina. Thank you, sir. Felix Sabal, excelente información, excellent information. Best regards. Thank you. 
Luis Gonzalez, congratulations, great show. Thank you. Maria Lopez, oh, salute. Thank you. Martin Perez, salute from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thank you. Felix Sabal says, uh, oh, you already said that. Thank you. Seyedo, South America, Emmy, salute. Thank you. Said Khan says there was a uh, grainy VHS. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Link Peterson said Mr. Holmes is the highest ranked international grade in American campus in South Africa. Wow, nice, nice. Yeah. Langford uh, says we need to change it. Yes, Mr. Soto, the people in South Africa are not aware of how good at Parker's American campus is in general or specifically at a self-defense school as Mr. Nassim Home is running. Thank you. We need to set South Africa ablaze. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, I hope this helps a little bit. You know, at least. Yeah, I hope this, this exposure helps a little bit, but I think you're doing an amazing job, sir. Marcel de Jong, hey, there's, there's me in the picture. Yes. Yeah. Where was he? Let's just, see. Just a quick one on. On, on Marcel, uh, Mr. Soto. So yes. uh, just about six months, uh, a couple of months before we hit the IKC in, in, in 2012, Marcel had uploaded a video on YouTube um, doing all his forms from from white belt up to up to black. And uh, I used that video uh, to complete some of my forms that that didn't have that I didn't have before. So uh, I went when I met Marcel. I told him I used your forms to to finish up the rest of my syllabus that I didn't have. <laughs> nice, nice, Mr. Sitavan. Same, miss you, my brother. Oh, Mr. Nice. Van. Yes, awesome. Said Khan says thank you, Mr. Holm. Looking forward to earning my second black under you. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> Maestro Sean Kelly, salute from USA, Florida. Yeah, nice. we followed Mr. Kelly uh, a lot of his stuff as well. Nice. Thomas Wessel says, Mr. Mr. Holm and Mr. Soto, the same long road and hard work reaps beautiful fruits. Nice. Uh, okay, Said Khan says, Mr. Holm, can you share more about your weapons training and your YouTube to those listening? Sorry, sir, we are out of time. Not enough time. You're going to have to be back again, my friend. Rafael Herrera, big salute, great maestros from Spain, Andalusia. Nice, nice, almost done. Soke, Nolan, uh, Barry, good evening, Mr. Holmes, and much respect. Thank you for signing in, sir. Carlos Villarroel, buona tarde, big master. How you doing? Salute from Brazil, from Manaus. Salute to your uh, uh, maestro, to your uh, guest. Thank you. Uh, salute and blessing. Kent Keaton says, thank you for sharing that story, Nassim. Uh, Read one. Read one, Master says, Master Soto, thank you for the wonderful show. I hope I did say your name right this time. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah. that was the last one, actually. Mr. Uh, Mr. Holmes, thank you so much. We are out of time, So, but you have, I don't know, uh, a minute or so if you want to share something. But before you, you say goodbye, if somebody wants to look for you, where can they reach you? Yeah, uh, they can find us at Home Self Defense on, on Facebook, or they can uh, track me down on my personal Facebook page, Nazim Holmes. And then on my, if they want to email me, they can find me at nazimholmes at gmail.com. Great, great. So it's Home Self Defense, you said? Home Self Defense, yeah. Let's put that on screen so people can see it. There we uh, go. Okay. And that's a nice crest you got. Nice logo. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So there he is. Uh, if you are in the area or if you want to talk to the man, if you are from, you know, any other place, I suggest you do so. Wonderful, wonderful people and great campus. Okay, sir. If you you want to add something, yeah, I, I I would I would be remiss if I did not thank Mr. Ward for all his work. 
uh, and effort that she's, she's put in to, to sharing everything with us. Uh, you know, Mr. Ward is like not just, you know, my instructor, my mentor, my friend. He's like family. You know, uh, whenever we travel overseas, Mrs. Ward is like my mom away from home. <laughs> And then, you know, Mr. Velez, Mr. Velez has been at all, all my gradings, you know, and, and Mr. Velez just shares everything. You can ask him anything. He's like, okay, come this side, I'll show you. And this, uh, Mrs. Dorin DiRienzo um, and Mr. Uh, 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 um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sa Norman Sadler, you know, it's when... I tell people this, and, it's, and, and this is what Kempo International is, the organization that we belong to, is when you, when you come to the IKC or you come to an event, it's like you're coming home. You're coming home to family that you haven't seen for a while. And, you know, Mr. Sadler, it's like, you know, he's always got that big smile and that big hug, and you can be on the other side of the room and he'll shout, that's him! <laughs> you know, and he's, it's always just so welcoming to... to to, to be uh, around the people that, that represent Kempo and Kempo International as an organization. It's just uh, such an amazing organization. Um, so, you know, we can never forget them because we never achieve anything uh, on our own. It's always Beautiful. as a group. Family. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much for being here, sir. I hope you had a good time. I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, I'm just bummed, you know, hour went so fast. It usually does, you know, when we get our guests, it's, it's just yeah. an hour, it's not enough, but but it is what it is. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir, for having me. Really appreciate and, it. And thank you to everybody that signed in and commented. Yes. Really appreciate it. it. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, touch base with everybody on Facebook, you know? Yes. Thank you, everybody, for watching the show. This was amazing. We had a lot of comments. Uh, Big salute to all the people there in South Africa. You have uh, quite a crowd, and I hope you continue to have great success and continue to spread the Kempo fire all over and burn it all with Kempo. Yes. <laughs> thank you, sir. You take care, and thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Have an awesome day. Cheers, everybody. Bye -bye.